G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for round 21. The season has four games left, I think, in the home and away season. So it's crunch time and this part of the year is very, very interesting. So let's talk about how we went last week, first of all. I got six correct tips and uh, I think I moved up 20 spots into the top 350, maybe, something like that, um, which I'm happy with. It's a big competition. The three I got wrong were Port Adelaide upsetting Carlton. Uh, didn't see that coming. Great win for the power. Melbourne fell just short against the Giants. That was a weird topsy-turvy game. Weird flow. And then finally as well, I got Sydney wrong. I tipped them to beat the Bulldogs. The game did not pan out the way I expected. It was, well, I expected a decent game, to be honest. The Bulldogs were in good form, but they panned Sydney and were fantastic with their pressure. Uh, the one I'm happy with was St Kilda over Essendon. My gut feel was telling me St Kilda were going to upset Essendon, and uh, it turned out to be an absolute pantsing as well. So a very interesting round with a lot of different narratives going on. Let's talk about how everyone went in our weekly competition. So... In our members tipping competition, the weekly winner was Random Aussie Things. Well done, Random. Uh, go check out his Instagram page, and I think he's on TikTok as well, but it's seven correct tips. That's great going. And the general tipping winner in our open competition is JRAD RO13. With the, he's with the only person to get nine correct tips this round, so outstanding. It means you tip Port Adelaide, you tip the Bulldogs. Very nicely done. The members tipping leader is still real swift. I reckon that makes it like 12 weeks in a row. That's outstanding with 117. And our general tipping leader is, is I think, a first timer in Ammo712 with 121. I'm 10 tips behind you. So well done, that's a great year of tipping. Fantasy League leader Tully Griffiths. Well, his average continues to swell to 21.25. I thought I might've beaten you this week, Tully. I got 23.89, I was very happy with that. And I think he got 2,400 something. So well done to all our weekly winners. It's uh, getting tight at the top. So we will crack into round 21, but before we do, if you do me a favor, if you are enjoying this AFL content and you wanna see more, I'm doing lots of trade stuff, draft stuff, you know, the weekly footy tipping show, of course. Finals just around the corner, we'll be covering all of that. So if you wanna see more of that, make sure you hit subscribe because 54% of people who watched my channel over the last month have not subscribed. I'm trying to hit 30,000 by grand final day. So if you could subscribe, or at least if you want to subscribe to see more content like this, I would really appreciate it if you do. Let's get into round 21. All right, we got the Bulldogs in Melbourne. Now, two weeks ago, I would have thought this would be a humdinger. And now I am feeling more and more like this is going to be potentially one-sided. So the Western Bulldogs have been in unreal form. One of the form sides of the competition, no doubt about it. And I hope they make finals because they could really shake things up the form they're in. Their talls are going to work. You know, I think they, you know, outstretched a bit of a Sydney undersized backline, but also their pressure has been fantastic. Like in the Bulldogs' best performances this year, their, their pressure has been the number one thing. Melbourne, by contrast, have been up and down, and the last fortnight hasn't been great. The Giants are a pretty good side, but they still fluffed a 27-point lead, and I think you can really tell that they're struggling a little bit without Max Gorn and, of course, Christian Petrarca. Sorry, when I say without Max Gorn, I mean when he's playing underdone. I know that he played on the weekend, but I still think he is very much a barometer player for them. So, honestly... I can't really picture Melbourne winning this. Now, they do have a habit of winning when I don't expect them to, or playing well, but I just don't rate them at the moment, and I'm going to say the Western Bulldogs win by a healthy 28 points. Ah, we have a second Friday night game this round. I have a theory that they're trying to hide this West Coast versus Gold Coast game on a Friday night. Like, what the hell? Regardless, I am hopeful that West Coast get up. Um, look, let's start with West Coast. They were pretty solid in the derby. The good first half got out to a three-goal lead, um, you know, pants by Fremantle in the third term, and then steadied to lose by about five or six goals. And I think most people on balance would say that was better than they expected. And, uh, you know, it seems like it's an honorable loss amongst a sea of honorable or terrible losses at the moment. No wins. It's either honorable losses or terrible losses. So what West Coast will we get this week? I do think the best version of West Coast could be Gold Coast, but my faith in that has dwindled away massively. The Gold Coast Suns are coming off their first home loss of the season, albeit against probably the best team in the competition in the Brisbane Lions. So could they back that up, their first home loss, with their first away win? I think it's more likely than not. I think on paper they're too strong for the Eagles. I think West Coast will come hard. I have a sense that, you know, being a relatively winnable game, sometimes shitty teams lift and they get a sniff. So I think a good version of West Coast might come out, but I, I don't think they'll win. And frankly, I'm sick of tipping West Coast and them disappointing me. So me not tipping them means we might win. Let's go Gold Coast 18 points. North Melbourne versus Richmond, 17th versus 18th. This, the form lines of this don't really feel right. I don't think North Melbourne are a bottom two side on form. If they were solid enough against the, the Cats, you know, it just felt like they lacked a little bit of polish. 
they their last kick going in sub 50 probably hurt them but overall it's been a run of two months where you know most of their games have been good other than maybe the sydney loss and i think that has been underscored by the re-signing of cam zoha who has been pretty outspoken about wanting to play for a club playing finals i think the faith he now has is reflective of north melbourne's form lately so they should go into this game as favorites and richmond have not at all put themselves to shame this year they have been pretty stoic given the injuries and frankly not a lot of young talent i still think they have performed pretty well given the circumstances and therefore i'm not going to rule them out of winning this game i think richmond is good enough to be able to shock teams i mean they beat sydney early in the year when sydney was flying so it could be a close game i think you have to respect the form north's in they haven't really been inconsistent over the last eight weeks okay one bad performance but overall that's a pretty continued run of form of looking pretty dangerous with Harry Sheasel exploding lately and therefore I feel pretty confident that the, that I can reliably predict the Roos to win this game four goals Geelong versus Adelaide at GMHBA now I have a feeling these two sides met there last year and it was a good game if I'm not mistaken mind you Adelaide have fallen away and Geelong were not a good team last year that's if that game was last year I think it was so Geelong at GMHBA has increasingly become unpredictable because, you know, they, they used to be a fortress. They've lost there six times, I think, in the last year and a half. And so, the, you know, the home ground notion isn't as strong in this game as well when you consider Adelaide have played well there recently. That being said, Cats are coming off a good win against North Melbourne. Look, they got challenged and I think their forward line polish um, has allowed them to put scores on the board even when they're not necessarily winning up the field. That's the way it's kind of felt anyway. You know, the week before that, they got pants by the Bulldogs, who are a very good team at the moment. On the other hand, Adelaide have also been extremely eclectic. The gap between their best and worst might actually be the biggest in the competition right now. I feel like I've said that about a few teams this year. But, I mean, you, they go to the uh, Marvel Stadium and they roll Essendon in what was a good game, a good standard of footy, regardless of how Essendon went the following week. They go home, they concede 13 goals in a row to Hawthorne, who are a good team too, but that's still a drop-off, you have to say. So I don't trust Adelaide enough in this game, and I think Geelong should win. I do think it will be close-ish, but Geelong will win an arm wrestle by 18 points. Oh my god, Carl Collingwood versus Carlton. You know, the, the, I think there's some potential for some shithousery by <laughs> Collingwood in this game. <laughs> Great rivalry game. And uh, a big game regardless of the fact that it may have looked like a grand final preview at the start of the year. It no longer feels like that, does it? Who wins this game? They two, the two sides intersect at an interesting point. Collingwood's season is technically hanging by a thread. I think they're pretty much out now. I don't have faith in them at the moment. Um, that being said, they are pretty resilient and strong team on their day. And particularly in a rivalry game, I don't think they're going to roll over. And Carlton have really put their season in jeopardy. And by their season, I mean their top four chances and by extension, premiership contention their premiership chances they've put them right on a knife's edge and this becomes a much needed win so this is a recipe for a pretty good game and i do think collingwood have the capacity to just shit stir here with carlton and ruin their season i don't know if i'll tip it though i think carlton are the better team at the moment and it has been a disappointing run of form but i think they might lift the occasion I think this one actually will be a good game. I could see Collingwood winning late in that typical fashion, but I'll say Carlton by eight points keep their chances alive. Port Adelaide versus Sydney is a tough game to tip now, considering the form. So Port Adelaide, you know, were good against Carlton. Like I said, just shut them down after a good start. Carlton's pressure in the first half was great. Port Adelaide were error riddled. In the second half, they flipped the script, hold Carlton to just one goal. Their season's certainly back on track now with a, a bit of a surprise victory away from home. And I want to respect that form by giving them a red hot chance here against the Swans who are out of form. What have they won? One of their last five, I think, something like that. And most recently got swarmed by the Western Bulldogs and their pressure. And of course, you know, a little bit outstretched by a tall forward line as well, which isn't probably the same strength that Port Adelaide regardless. I think, I don't know, man, like with Sydney here, while they were winning, I was predicting that eventually a form slump will come. And I got that right. I didn't predict when. Um, equally, I think that there's a chance that they're going to snap back into their best form at any point, like good sides do around this time of year. So I am very nervous against tipping against Sydney. I want to tip Port Adelaide, but I think, I think I'm going to go against the grain. If I had to guess, I think most people might tip Port Adelaide this week. But I will say Sydney re-establish themselves as a good team, because they need to at this point, and win by seven points. Oh, the Giants and Hawthorne at Marnock is another tricky one. So this is a battle between seventh and ninth, and realistically, 
there is a chance that only one of these teams make the finals. In fact, it's possible, probably likely. So this is almost a mini final. GWS were pretty good last week, and they beat Melbourne after conceding a 27-point quarter time lead. You know, Hogan played well. Callahan, Tom Green, these guys are firing. GWS are a good team on paper. This is not their true home ground. Bear that in mind. Hawthorne, though, I said in the football come down this week, you've got to take them seriously now. Like, this form line has stretched. It's not a flash in the pan. Okay, Adelaide are not the best team at the moment, but I'm just more impressed about the length of this streak of good form, and I think they are genuinely a good side. And to be honest, I think they're better than the Giants. Who wins in this particular game? Well, I think Hawthorne beat them in Tassie narrowly, if I've got that right. This is at Monica Again, not a true home game for the Giants, but I think I'm going to tip Hawthorne. Both teams will want to win this to prove that they're serious, like I said about Melbourne versus GWS. And my trust with the Giants is a little bit low. And my trust with the Hawthorne is very high at the moment. So I'm going to tip the Hawks. Seven points. Essendon versus Fremantle looked like a humdinger a few weeks ago, didn't it? But Essendon has fallen away with a really disappointing 63 or 53 point loss to St Kilda on the weekend. A team that has been struggling, albeit has been in good form lately. But you have to just isolate the Essendon form for what it is, and it hasn't been good. And they dropped a very winnable one against Adelaide. Adelaide played well, but Essendon still let that slip. And season was on the line, and I'd, I'd argue they're probably out of finals now based on their current form. This is a must-win for them. The season's technically not over, so they do still have plenty to play for. This is the MCG. This is interesting. Essendon versus Fremantle at the MCG. I don't think that's happened too many times in the last 20 years. I could be wrong. Look, Fremantle are a very good team. How much did we learn from the Derby? Well, I think they got challenged by a team playing much better than their usual standard, and then they responded and won in a mature performance. Um, it didn't make them more of a premiership threat, but I think they were pretty good against a, a team that was pretty switched on. So no concerns about Fremantle's form. There's no doubt about that. Um, how are they at the MCG? I don't remember if they've played there this year. I think they pumped Hawthorne in the final round last year. Was that at the MCG? Uh, I think they'll be fine. I don't think Essendon will put up too much of a trouble uh, trouble for them. It might not be a belting, but I, I think Fremantle win comfortably by 30 points. St Kilda versus Brisbane is also tricky now. St Kilda are in great form. They've beaten the Swans. Um, they pantsed West Coast, <laughs> which is obviously one of the biggest tests in footy right now. Um, in a more serious way of phrasing that, they looked very potent against West Coast, and then they carried that form against Essendon. So, look, genuinely have been in much better form and, and more reflective of the form I expected from St Kilda this year. I think I tipped them to finish sixth, and they've waited till it's too late to start producing that. It's still positive, though. It is still good for them going into next year. Now, the Brisbane Lions have been on some kind of winning streak. I don't know what the stats suggest, but obviously they started the year 0-3, I want to say. And, uh, you know, have been pretty damn good for a while now. Face some tough tests. Good hard win against the Suns at Metricon. First team to do that. Could they be vulnerable? I think I think at any game they could be vulnerable given, you know, the more you win in a row, the more vulnerable you are, I think, to a random loss. And St Kilda here is a tricky prospect. I don't think this is going to be simple. I think I will tip Brisbane. I think I do want to tip St Kilda, to be honest. I think there is a good chance they win, but... I'll say the mature Brisbane Lions, who were aware of what they missed out on last year narrowly, realize what's up for grabs here if they continue to win. I think I'll tip them, but this could be a, this could be game of the round, to be honest. Okay, that is the conclusion of round 21 based on my tips. So I have Sydney beating Port Adelaide and remaining top spot. Brisbane in second. Carlton hanging on to fourth spot with their win over Collingwood. Again, I'm not super confident about that. Bulldogs up into sixth is much better reflection of where they actually are in terms of form. Hawthorne remain in ninth despite beating the Giants. I think it's just percentage there. But look, with Hawthorne's win over Adelaide, they've made up some ground on percentage, so good, good for them. Essendon, I think, you know, I think if it's not already the case, the top nine are battling for the eight now, and Essendon in tenth are not realistically going to do it. There's six points behind Hawthorne there, and 10% as well, which just hurts as well. Other than that, not a whole lot of movement. West Coast hanging on by a thread to third last. I do think that will change when West Coast and North Melbourne do battle next week. But for now, let me know in the comments your tips, any potential upsets you see coming this week. Also, let me know how you went last week. I never ask you guys that, but um, it'd be great to hear how you guys went. For now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.